Well, I will make a short presentation of what happens in Austria, especially what's the, what the Austrian Center Beer Wolf Lungs means. Yeah, let's start. Uh, once upon a time, but not in the West, once upon a time in that case, in the Eastern Alps, in the year uh, 1881, the last sighting of a wolf in the, uh, in the Eastern Alps in Austria happened. And in the year 1882, the last wolf was killed in Austria. But as we all know, the wolves are coming back and they come back from, uh, from the other states to Austria. They come from Slovenia, they come from mainly from Italy, but also from Germany and from Czech. That means uh, Austria is no more longer a country without any wolves. Uh, it's uh, a country where wolves come and where very good uh, conditions for living for them. In the last 20 years, uh, the, the migration of the wolves to Austria uh, happens, and it happened already at the first uh, uh, main known. Uh, case was uh, was in 2022. There was one uh, wolf shot because it was they mean it was a poaching dog. In the year in the years uh, 2004 to 2015, oh, we get several individuals all over Austria, but there was just uh, a few and it became more and more. And the first, uh, the first pack was in 2016 at the military training area. It's similar, quite similar to Germany. Uh, it's a very big uh, military training area and there were very good conditions for the wolves because there were not uh, not much hunting, and there were many many deers and many many wild wild pigs. And yeah, it's it's going on. And you see now here you see a map uh, of the year twenty 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 two. And if you see, if you look here, you see already uh, many wolves uh, which stay longer than six months or or to six months. And we have at the moment we have four packs. A few weeks ago uh, we had uh, just three, but now we know that we have in Austria four packs. The number of wolves of Austria, you see it here, it still grows. I show you uh, nothing which is really different to other countries. And now we are, we are about uh, 40, uh, 40, 40 wolves. You see here at the, ne at the next, you see the new arrivals and you see the green. Uh, which are from the year before. This is interesting because it seems that many wolves leave Austria. They just use it as a, I would say, for transit. Uh, in Austria now, we have, I told you already, we have uh, two confirmed packs in Lower Austria. We have one pack close to the Czech Bavarian Austrian order. And on now we have two packs and newly, confir newly confirmed in 2022 in the Alpine region, which are the first packs in the Alpine region uh, in Austria. Uh, 20. 
21, we had 36 wolves were gen genetically verified. And there's a bigger number which are not gen uh, genetically verified. And now until the end of the October 2022, we have uh, 42 individuals which are verif verified genetically. And the number of the genetic analysis grows. We are now we are close to thousand uh, general genetic analysis which are made by the Veterinarian uh, University in Vienna. Uh, the estimation is about 50 to 60 wolves, which are were at least in Austria in 2022. This also means more damages, means more pressure, and means uh, more problems, especially if you tried uh, in these areas where the people tried to ignore uh, this uh, subject. Uh, in 20, 2019 uh, was the, the year of the foundation of the Austrian Center Beer, Local, Beer Wolf Links. Uh, which is a which is a cooperation between the federal, state, and the former ministries of agriculture and environment. Now it's a uh, uh, I have to now. I think I have to tell you about the the state of Austria, which is. Uh, also, uh, like Germany, it is divided in several, in exactly in nine federal states, and these nine uh, I, and these states have also responsibilities, especially for nature and for agriculture, which means that we have in Austria nine different different uh, laws for environment, especially for nature and for, uh, na uh, for saving the nature, and uh, nine different, different laws for agriculture subjects. Uh, these states and these ministries uh, uh, organized an association uh, which is independent of the legal jurisdiction and independent of the administration to uh, deal with the, pro uh, with the problems and with the subjects that uh, will come to Austria because of the uh, predators. Yeah. So we have in this uh, in this center we have eleven full members: the federal states, Ministry of Agriculture, and the Ministry of Climate Action, which means the uh, Ministry of uh, Environmental Subjects. And we have twelve associated members: interest groups like agriculture, forestry, and hunting research. Uh, the University of Life Science Vienna, Wetmed Uni uh, Wet uh, University Vienna, and uh, some NGOs like the uh, WWF and the Naturschutzbund. Uh, what we are doing is try to deal with uh, the problems and the conflicts. Uh, we try to, uh, to support the administration in preventation, in dissemination. So we try to, we try to uh, help 
by, uh, in the subjects of training, education, awareness building. And also a big subject is the compensation, minimizing damages, conflict, and the conflict management. Compensation is also uh, in the responsibility of the nine federal states. And uh, at the moment, it's still not happened that the compensation for damages is in whole Austria the same. Uh, so it depends uh, where you are, maybe 50 kilometers away, you get more for, uh, for a killed sheep uh, than in the other federal state. So it's not on the, all on the same level, which still is a big issue. And we tried to, uh, to, uh, to, to find competition, compensation uh, guidelines which are now the, the same in whole Austria, but the federal states uh, doesn't pay the same. Yeah, coexistence is a dynamic but sustainable uh, state in which humans and large carnivores are adapted to life in our cultural landscape. Human tolerance towards, la towards large carnivores and tolerance between different stakeholders are key mechanisms. So we at the moment uh, have uh, quite a lot problem with human tolerance, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, typical for Austria. When I hear the problems and the discussions in other countries, it seems to me always it's very similar and it needs time and it needs uh, a lot of uh, awareness building, of talking, and of uh, take care of the rural uh, population so that uh, you can find, uh, you can find compromises. In Austria, still at the moment, some people think uh, we don't need the wolf and we don't want the wolf, and so uh, the wolf can't be here. They uh, deny uh, Bern Bernie Convention and they also deny the habitat directives. But uh, even the, even that doesn't help the wolf, especially the wolf and also the beer comes to Austria. And uh, some of them stay in Austria too. So coexistence at all has a scientific and the social component. And the social component at the moment is in Austria a very big uh, subject and one of the hardest jobs to do uh, to find uh, to find this acceptance. So in Austria, we have to find social, we have to make social and political decisions. They are necessary and they are not in all federal states done. Uh, you can see this in one uh, in in some of the federal states. You have uh, you have government aid for fences and for things like this. In other state, this is in three states. In six states, uh, in six federal states, you have no government aid for, uh, for fences or or another help. So another part in, of our work is scientific work. We are very close to the, to the University of Veterinary, Vienna. Uh, we work together with uh, the BOKU, AREC, Aviso, Agridea to uh, design and to find a way for Austria. One of, the, uh, one of the big subjects in the last two years were the, the, the 
wolf management and to give the to give a guideline for the federal states for the implementation of actions and the different uh, to to make laws and to to help them and to find out uh, how how they can work basics for an up to date wolf management and the framework of international laws were were made uh, in this uh, wolves management other another big uh, subject are the prevention measures uh, livestock protection includes all measures and we try to uh, to to give information to the people how to avoid damages how to maybe uh, like how to uh, build fences uh, how to uh, make a good flock management Uh, livestock protection means also on the farm, but in the valleys and the lowland and also in the mountain patches. So we have three big, uh, big points where we should, um, should work. And the most problem we have, most problems we have with damages is about the mountain pasture because there are not very many fences. That we have no uh, livestock guardian dogs at the moment. Uh, at the moment, it's nearly impossible uh, to work with livestock guardian dogs in the mountains because the laws at the moment, and these are state laws, not federal laws, are very strict, uh, which makes it nearly impossible to work with these dogs. But all, we are working on, also on this subject to, to, to change that the working with livestock uh, guardian dogs is possible. Uh, so we give information, so we also give information uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the people uh, about technical standards and uh, you have we have some folders uh, which are which are available in whole Austria uh, to uh, to teach the people how to make fences and how to uh, make the protection. Uh, we also uh, work together in some EU, EU, EU life projects, especially in the livestock protect uh, project. Uh, which is uh, especially like the you know, like is it called livestock protection. Uh, And uh, we try to use the experiences in different countries, like Germany, like Italy, uh, to avoid to avoid mistakes. Uh, another uh, another big uh, subject wa was the the teaching of the damage inst inspectors uh, in for the for whole Austria that we have all the say that they have all the same standards for genetical uh, analysis uh, and we trained them and uh, so we have so now we have a, in the whole country we have damage inspectors which are on the same technical standard. This is important for the compensation payments, uh, and this is the basis of the of the monitoring at the moment. This is the biggest part of the monitoring is the genetical uh, uh, part.
but now we try also to change the uh, the monitoring also on a bigger on a on in a bigger way so that is not only genetical and now i also show you something i think that most of you know from your own home countries uh, damages uh, are getting more and more, more wolves, more damages. Now, uh, at the moment, we are we are already in 22. Uh, 2022, there we have about 750 damages, mostly sheep and goats, but also some cattle. And uh, this will become more and more. Uh, uh, this problem uh, will be uh, will be more and more because of also of the economical structural problems with smallholder farms, about up to fifteen or twenty sheep, part-time farmers, uh, people. Uh, which uh, people who have the their other jobs, but uh, their heart in the, in their heart they are farmers. And also we tried uh, we trained ag agricultural workers, which are focused on herding and alpine pastures. This is a pilot project project. We started already in schools, like the like the schools Grabnerhof. Uh, the basis is existing skilled worker trainings within the framework of curriculum of agricultural schools to train the young people. Maybe you know uh, the things you have heard in school, you forget them at the moment. But if you need them, you still will remember for these things after years. Uh, this was already very successful and it's very interesting for the young people to give them the possibilities which are necessary for this work in the next years. We uh, so you have a short overview about the curriculum. Uh, they got an um, introduction to alpine pastures and the management of uh, the the flocks, compulsory training, livestock protection, introduction introduction of working with dogs, which is uh, not very common in Austria. We have no tradition, especially with livestock guarding dogs. Uh, we teach them about administrative duties uh, and cooperations with the tourism uh, visitor guidance, and also about the technical skills. Also uh, very important for the shepherds is the vet uh, veterinary medicine. Uh, within the, uh, the life project Wolf Alps AU, uh, we, uh, we made some uh, special protection units. So uh, they can help the farmers if there are any damages. Uh, if there uh, if there are some problems with uh, with the wolf or with the bear, they come, they help, they build fence uh, to give uh, to give the farmers the help they need at this uh, at this moment.
yeah into the future what will the, what will happen in the future uh there will be more wolves there will be more beers and there will be no work for the austria more work for the austrian center yeah uh, especially i think the most important thing is uh in the next years to help uh for uh, the, the people to bring more acceptance to the country and to the landscape So at the end, I would say thank you for your attention. I hope I was quite fast. And if there are any questions, now, pl now please. Thank you, Klaus. Personal level of Andalusal. Klaus, there is one question on the the chat which is why are the protective dogs not okay. allowed in the alpine areas of Austria? Okay. Uh, at the moment, uh, the, uh, the uh, sorry, just a moment. uh the law to protect animals to protect the dogs are very strong so you are not allowed to have a dog uh, behind an electric fence and uh, it is not allowed uh, to have a, a dog in the mountains without without a hut so uh, this makes it nearly impossible at the moment and it also depends on uh, that that we have no tradition of lifeguarding dogs and uh, we have uh, at the moment no real uh, definition of it But uh, but at all we work and at and uh, now we have uh, some government uh, aids for for the, for guardian dogs and now we are make a spare we are we are working on a special uh, certification for the for these dogs and I think it's just a question of time and of months. That this will be that the law will be changed. Do you have some other questions? <laughs> ah, uh, so, yes. yes. Excuse me. Uh, there was an another comment on the fact that it's um about the the, the non-allowance of dogs to guard the, the flocks uh, and with the comment that that makes you very different from other countries In the, in, the, in the room. Okay. Il y a eu une délégation qui sont venus en France une très grosse motivation avec les hommes politiques en Autriche pour être contre euh, la, la réintrain, réintrain, comme, enfin, le retour du loup euh, en Autriche. Comment vous l'expliquez alors que apparemment vu à vous écouter ça se passe bien et quand on écoute les éleveurs autrichiens, il y a une opposition très farouche avec les hommes politiques et qui ont même fait des demandes à l'Europe pour changer le statut du loup. Comment vous l'expliquez cette différence 
Uh, yes, this is a, a political thing that happens, and uh, there uh, there are many influences of, of pharma organs. Uh, there are some special pharma organizations, like uh, like also uh, which of what happens in Switzerland. And they uh, they don't uh, they don't want uh, to accept uh, the habitat directives, and they want to change it. This is also it's uh, I think this is a democratic uh, possibility, and we will see if there are any uh, any changes or not. There's another question. Um, do you know if in Aust in Austria, if the presence of the wolf or the other predators has had an impact on native or natural or uh, uh, herbivores? Um, yes. Uh, uh, each predator changes uh, changes nature. That's 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 always that that's all that's always in a in a way. But uh, but I think at the more uh, we we have uh, decided uh, in the Bernie Convention and in the Habitat Directives that we will accept these changes. And uh, so we have this uh, this laws at the moment, and we have to accept it, and we have to uh, try to uh, to reduce conflicts as possible. Okay, and um, one last little question uh, about the um, the farmers. Uh, do the small farm holds? where the farmers are perhaps not full-time, are they the ones most submitted to predation? Uh, yes, uh, but I would say we, uh, we have about 80% of the small farmers. And uh, we have also, at the long term, we have also. I think it will be necessary that we have to change some parts of uh, of these agriculture structures. We try to uh, to build up a kind. I would I would call it a small uh, uh, small uh, small protection with fences. Uh, where and uh, on the other way, uh, we would at, at the longer term, I think uh, we should find corporations of of more of farmers. Sorry, what was going on with the wolf in uh, Slovenia? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, it was never exterminated from Slovenia. Uh, it's in Slovenia. I have to stand here so for the camera. Uh, it was never exterminated from Slovenia. Uh, we have had uh, in the 19th century very low number, intensive removal of wolves. Uh, but then the first local protection came from the hunters uh, in 73. And then the national protection came from the hunters in 1990. And in 1993, it was protected from the from the from the state. Next, uh, so uh, this the wolf stayed in the lower part of uh, Slovenia and where it's connected to the Dinarics. 
So the, then uh, they started to spread, spread since 1990. Uh, so this is the current uh, map. Matej will later explain uh, more in details. But the number in the southern part of Slovenia has uh, drastically decreased, uh, increased, and the wolves also moved to the Alps around uh, three years ago. So now we have packs in the Alps and in the Narek Mountains. Next. Uh, and also about the numbers, uh, the numbers of wolves increases. In 2010, uh, we had the first genetic count. We had about 40 individuals, and today we have about uh, 120. So also the trend is spatially expanding, and the number uh, is uh, growing. Next. Uh, so we have... Um, this is all the work which we are doing and we have strong connection between the project work uh, and the regular work uh, so it's really interconnected and uh, we will explain a little bit how we start things through the projects it's mostly life projects and how this work is then implemented into the uh, regular work so next uh, if you see all this what is in the red square this is was started by the project work and then implemented into regular management. Next. Uh, so uh, first about the strategic documents, it's strongly influenced by Habitat Directive and Baron Convention, uh, as was already explained. Uh, and next, uh, the, the, we have now the strategy, firstly done in, in 2009. Uh, and we had an action plan valid from 2013 to 2017. And this action plan was done with the uh, EU uh, project, Slow Wolf. And now we are re revising this uh, project in the frame of uh, Wolf Alps EU uh, projects. Next. Um, these are the institutions which are involved in creation of the strategic documents, so we try to be inclusive, uh, we invite uh, everybody who wants to participate, and we have a more narrow group which is uh, creating the document, and then we are presenting it more publicly. Next. So now, uh, one really important issue which was discussed already today about uh, damage uh, prevention. Next. Uh, so if you look at the graph, these are the damages still uh, 2010. Uh, you can see that the, the, the graph is uh, strongly increasing. Uh, the, the damages since 1995 are evaluated by uh, Slovenia Forest Service uh, personnel. Uh, and the minimum what you have to do to get the compensation is to have at least uh, electric uh, prevention. It's not described exactly how, but at least electricity. But of course, we know that this is not enough for the for the prevention. But this is the rule: uh, what you have to do to get the compensation. Next. Uh, okay. Uh, so, in, in 1990, uh, 2010, we were in a quite a difficult uh, situation uh, because then uh, state was giving the money for buying the electric nets. Our farmers were using this a lot, and this system was established, but the damages were still growing really, really uh, fast, and the state decided it is no use to do this. It's no use to give money for something that doesn't work. And the state stopped uh, stopped giving uh, prevention, and there was a kind of common belief that nothing can be done to stop the damages. And in the Slovo project, we started uh, with intensive collaboration with the farmers. Uh, we bought the uh, electric nettings, which were 145 between 170 centimeters high. Uh, and we gave them to, the, to some farmers and really observed what is going on with them, how they are maintained and what they do. And we soon found out uh, that there are many mistakes. Already the farmers which really wanted to work with us were doing many mistakes and there was lower non-electricity and this caused that the damages happened. So 
uh, we, with them together, improved the system. We took care that the really strong electricity is all the time in this electromagnetics. And just to this, we, uh, we stopped the damages. Next. Uh, so now what came into the system is that we work with the farmers regularly and we have the control. So we have to go at least once per year to all the farmers and check if it's maintained properly. If it's not maintained properly, we tell them what is to improve. And then they do. when they do it, we come again to see if everything is done properly. The main purpose of this is advising how they should work. But on the other hand, is also control because we have the possibility to take this uh, prevention measures away if they are not maintained properly. Because if there is a electric net which is not working properly, this is like a polygon for teaching the wolves how to jump over it or how to uh, cross. So we believe it's really not good to have electric nettings on the field which are not under strong electric current. Next. Uh, so this is uh, the number, how many of these electric, uh, uh, high electric fences are distributed among the farmers. Uh, on the left side is to ship herders, and on the right side is the uh, are also other because in our case it really goes hand in hand with the bear because we also have about a thousand bear in Slovenia, and prevention is uh, given for the farmers and also for beehives and other other um, property where bear can make the damage. Next. So about the working uh, working guarding dogs. We started with distributing dogs, but now what we support is we support the working lines of dogs. So we kind of help the people who have the guarding dogs to distribute them further, and they are the ones who are advising the farmers further on. It's not us mainly, it is the farmers who advise other farmers how to work. And we came to the conclusion that this is a good system. But the problem is because this is not supported by the state. This is currently just under projects. And we hope to bring it into the system as soon as possible. But electric lettings now are supported by the states with 80% of co-financing, but the dogs are not yet. Next. So uh, what we do, basically we have like, uh, Basically, we have two ways of uh, helping the farmers. One is with national funding, which is by the Ministry of Environment. This is for, uh, for nettings, to buying the equipment. The other, with Euro European Agricultural Rural Development Funds, uh, we are giving uh, the money for their work. So it's from two pillars. One is from the Ministry for Agriculture, one is from the Ministry for Environment. Next. Uh, if okay, uh, so uh, uh, this way is from for the Ministry for uh, for Environment, and in the, this goes through Slovenia Forest Service. So we distribute fences from the projects or from the national co-funding, and the other is for the work. This is uh, through through the Chamber for Agriculture. And they are helping, these are um, agriculture subsidies. So we believe that it's not a really good way that through these funds, the electric net these things are distributed because it's really difficult to control how they use. In this way, uh, we have contract where both parties agree that we can also co um, control them. Here we know it's about 5% of controls and at the end, the efficiency is really under question. Next. Uh, okay, so this is the use of the Agric uh, uh, European Agricultural Rural Development Fund. So we have three ways. One is for shepherd, one is for dogs, and one is for high electric nettings. This is just for work, and you see the number of people using it. So the number is not high, but anyway, the trend is increasing. And we work together with the agriculture chamber. And now also they really started to uh, promote it. So we believe this is the work on long term that this will really come into the system strongly. 
Next. Uh, okay, so this is the, the graph of damages. Uh, if you remember in 2010, we had 40 wolves and 350,000 euro damages. Now we have 120, and we have about between 100 and 200,000 euro damages. So I believe we are the only or one of the few countries in Europe which has a strong decrease of the world population. And despite this, we managed to decrease the damages caused by wolf. Next. Uh, so this was about the prevention. And I continue with other things which we are doing. So adjusted management of prey species. This is especially good for, uh, for increasing the tolerance by the hunters for the, for the wolf. So concretely, Slovenia Forest Service is making the plans for, for, uh, for ungulate management. And they need to be followed by the hunters and quite a strong fees are prescribed if they are not followed by the hunters. So what we want to do with this adjusted management is if you have a wolf uh, and you are not completely fulfilling your quotas, you have some tolerance. And the other thing is that wolf has got an impact on the structure. They prey more young animals uh, and more, uh, more females, especially with the red deer. And this needs to be taken in account because our hunters don't like to shoot so much uh, females. And if they have wolf, we say, okay, you have the, the wolf, so your culling quota for the females, uh, for the female red deer is smaller. Uh, it's quite a complex uh, system, but um, still the, the idea is on one hand to take into account the actual influence of wolf. And the second is, uh, to come closer to the hunters where they have a problem, uh, we, try, we say, okay, uh, what do you expect from us to do with the planning? And we try to incorporate the, this as much as possible. Next. Uh, okay, this I explained. Next. Uh, so the other action which we are doing is prevention of poaching. We are doing this within the Life Links project. So it's a project about the links, but the responsible institution who is doing this is are the hunters, it's the hunter association. Uh, so we believe this is the most effective way because if the hunters association fight against poaching, we believe it is the most accepted uh, among uh, the hunters. And concretely, what they were doing, they were organizing the lectures for the police officers. And in they, uh, now we came to the conclusion that it's really important that we invite also public prosecutors uh, and uh, also judges. So that the whole line is closed. Uh, but now most of the education went to the police. Next. Uh, and on the other hand, to the people who come to some uh, illegal killing on the field. So these are mostly hunters and Slovenia Forest Service personnel. So we educated them how to react if they find a potential uh, illegal kill. It's quite important because if you, for example, move this animal, then you have the then you have uh, ruined all the all the proofs for the police, so they cannot do nothing. So we have to leave it there, and it was quite an important uh, educational process. And we wrote into the hunting magazine just to explain how important this is. If you want to really uh, fight against in, uh, this, and if you want to find who did the illegal act, next. So about uh, communication, I will go a bit uh, faster through this, but I believe it's really important. And today in the presentations, I haven't heard much of this. So I was missing a little bit because this is, and I believe talking to people is the most important uh, thing. The other things are concrete, but if you explain, then you can also come to some conclusions. So what we have done in the recent uh, years one is a visitor center, a municipality was interested uh, for this and they created the visitor center. And uh, uh, the important thing there is they are explaining uh, how to avoid conflicts. This is really uh, important. And al already uh, last year in Corona year, they had more than 10,000 visitors. So really a lot of people come there and want to know what it is, especially the schools. Next. 
Uh, so we have in the within Slovenia forest service on mushroom, a forest house, which is smaller, but still with the same purpose to explain to people how this uh, coexistence works and what is the role of live carnivores in nature. So actually, why do we want to protect them? Why it's important to have this uh, predator? Next. Uh, yeah, through the Wolf Alp Sale project, we work quite some, uh, we do quite some work in the schools. Next. And we have thematic platform with livestock breeders. With those people who are using the electric nettings, we meet and we discuss these uh, issues. So they give us feedback, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, and to really, uh, that we really develop what we want to do together with them, not uh, alone. And when we do the strategic documents, of course, I already mentioned, we invite really everybody who wants to participate. Next. Um, and the, 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 the last thing are the volunteers. Uh, the volunteers help with monitoring. So first we have to teach them how to collect some samples. And the second thing is really important to give them feedback for, the, for, the, for their help, because without the feedback, they don't participate in the future. So uh, work with the volunteers uh, is really uh, important. And these volunteers are often also hunters. So this is kind of working with volunteers, hunters. Now, Matei will continue. Thank you, Rock. Uh, my, my name is Matei Bartel, uh, and same as Rock, uh, I'm working for the Slovenia Forest Service. Uh, I will continue with the presentation, starting with uh, monitoring. Uh, next. Uh, in Slovenia, we use several uh, different uh, methods for monitoring. Next. Uh, uh, but not all are regularly used. Uh, on a regular basis, we uh, record uh, the wolf uh, signs of presence. Uh, we record uh, the mortality of wolves. Uh, we sample all the dead wolves. Uh, we um, take the measures. And we also record uh, the damage cases. This is done on a regular basis. Uh, at least every second year, uh, we try to uh, get the uh, population uh, number estimate uh, by the genetic methods. And sporadically, there are some other uh, methods we use if there are uh, funds available. Next. Uh, this is the example of the survey uh, for the managers of the hunting grounds. We do uh, twice per year. And uh, in this way, we, we get the useful information uh, also for the genetic sampling in the years uh, when we conduct the genetic monitoring. Next. Uh, as Rock already mentioned before, uh, the projects uh, implemented uh, several uh, new uh, useful methods into the uh, regular uh, management of wolves. And uh, one of such is also the genetic monitoring, which was implemented in 2010 uh, within a Slow Wolf project. And uh, after the, at the end of the Slow Wolf project, um, the Ministry for the Environment is uh, funding uh, the genetic monitoring. And this done it is done almost uh, every year uh, so far uh, we conducted uh, six uh, seasons successfully finished and uh, we are in the seventh right now uh, the slovenia forest service is uh, coordinating the activities and uh, you can see <clears throat> the all other partner institutions which help us uh, to to conduct the the genetic monitoring <clears throat> next uh, when sampling the, the for, for the genetic monitoring, uh, we use uh, we, we sample scats, urine, hair, saliva from natural prey, uh, and we also use all the uh, working samples from the uh, damage cases of the saliva, uh, which um, are systematic, which are being systematically uh, collected uh, when approaching the damage cases. Uh, all the sampling or mo most of the sampling is done by the foresters and professional hunters which work uh, for the Slovenia Forest Service. Also uh, the university staff, uh, Triglav National Park and uh, some volunteers. 
And uh, in the last season, uh, we uh, did um, uh, 110 uh, samplers collected at least one sample. And uh, you can imagine that the whole group of the people who participated in this uh, was even much, much bigger. Uh, next. Uh, yeah, through the uh, analysis of the uh, genetic samples, we estimate the, or we calculate the, the minimum population size. Next. Uh, next. Uh, we uh, calculate the uh, estimation of the population size uh, using the recapture method. And uh, why there are two lines? Uh, because we do the correction for this just for the Slovenia, uh, where we uh, count uh, all the animals on the from the packs which are um, uh, which are detected on the both sides of the national border, and we just uh, take account the half uh, of these uh, animals from those packs. Uh, this is just for the uh, management purposes. Next. Uh, we also do the uh, kinship analysis next, uh, through which we uh, we want to follow what, what is uh, happening with each of our packs. And uh, here you can see a nice example how the population is spreading, uh, especially into the northwest part of the country. Uh, in 2019, we got the first uh, three uh, packs in the Alps, and uh, since then we have the stable uh, wolf packs in the Alps. Uh, next. <clears throat> Besides that, we also uh, um, calculate several other population parameters, and uh, maybe one of the most uh, useful uh, in the or mo most popular in the last uh, few years is the detection of the wolf dog hybrids, but I will speak more about that uh, later. Next. Uh, <clears throat> the One of the most important uh, things we found out during the all the years of monitoring is that it, um, the it, it is one of the most crucial things to maintain uh, a network of the field personnel. Uh, and to keep the motivation uh, high uh, for the gathering all the samples, because they are crucial if we want to uh, get good results. Uh, therefore, we are uh, doing the annual workshops for them. We are uh, giving them feedback uh, as regular uh, as possible. Uh, and uh, also some symbolic gifts uh, showed really useful for keeping up the motivation, such as t-shirts or small backpacks or something like that. Uh, next. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> one area where Slovenia uh, service is also uh, involved through the uh, preparation of the expert uh, opinions on the uh, removal of the wolves is also yeah, uh, removal of the individuals from the population. Next. Uh, here you can see uh, the detected wolf mortality in Slovenia in the last uh, 20 and something years. Uh, you can see it goes from zero up to 20. Uh, next. And uh, since entering the EU in 2004, uh, we were using the system quite similar to the quota system. Uh, and then the Slovenian court said that this is not okay uh, and that uh, we cannot use the, um, uh, the derogation under the 16E uh, anymore. And uh, then the, the system uh, changed uh, significantly from 2000, 2019 on. Uh, next. Uh, <clears throat> since 2019, um, we started with uh, much more targeted um, culling uh, of the walls from population. Next. Uh, the, the significant improvement were the national guide, guidelines, which were issued by the ministry in 2020, uh, which uh, defines uh, what terms should be uh, met when, uh, for, for, for the, for the uh, individuals to be culled. Next. Uh, and then the guidelines says that uh, at least three attacks <clears throat> should occur on large livestock by the same pack in consecutive three months. <clears throat> and another um, 
thing uh, is that the wolf has to be shot uh, on the agricultural land. Next. And uh, if we uh, if if we look uh, what what the guideline says about the uh, small livestock such as uh, goats or sheep, uh, here the um, the guidelines are even more strict, and they demand nine attacks on the of the same pack in three consecutive months. And additionally, these herds have to be protected with electrical nettings or livestock guarding dogs. Uh, the only exception is the pastures on extremely rugged terrain where the fences cannot be set. Next. Uh, <clears throat> the bald dwarfs culling uh, is also included in international gu guidelines, uh, but uh, it is um, di direct uh, um, guidelines from the SCIE are uh, cited into these guidelines. So probably you, most of you know these guidelines. So I, I won't go into the details about this. Next. Uh, and the one really um, challenging, uh, uh, ch challenging chapter of the, the guidelines are also wolf dog hybrids. Uh, this is the, the issue or the challenge in, of the past few years in Slovenia. Uh, next. Uh, where uh, to, in 2019, uh, the first uh, F1 uh, liter, wolf dog liter, was detected in the north of Slovenia, in the Kamnik Slovenia Alps. Next. Uh, <clears throat> Following, uh, or uh, yeah, in 2009 and on, uh, there were several uh, permissions for uh, hybrid uh, removal uh, issued for this region. Next, and uh, after that, six individuals were successfully removed, and uh, we can. This example we can now take as a good practice example because at the moment we don't detect any any more hybrids uh, in this part of Slovenia. Next, but already in 2020 uh, we detected the the male hybrid with the female um, wolf in the far northeast area of Slovenia, uh, border area with area with Italy. Uh, also for that area, some uh, permissions for removal of the animals were uh, issued, but uh, we were not that successful there. The next, so far we just called uh, two individuals, individuals there, uh, but uh, two uh, liters were already detected there in 2021 and 2000, uh, 2021 and 2022, so this year. Uh, the reason behind is uh, because uh, Probably most of the time the, the pack is on the uh, Italian side. And the another reason is that uh, the territory of the pack in Slovenia is in really hardly accessible terrain. So these are the two reasons we'll follow or we'll see what, what will happen to this pack in the future. But um, now we cannot say much about it. Uh, next. Uh, and this, this is my last slide. Uh, I showed the permits issued from 2019, and you can see that um, the execution of the permits is quite uh, low, less than 50%. And the reason behind this is that uh, the, the limitations are really strict. So we really want to target the, the problematic animals um, and uh, really yeah, uh, try to solve the problems this way. This is it. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right on time again. Good. So we have time for questions. Okay. This one. Uh, so the first question is on the. Um, uh, as a health question, is the Slovenian wolf monitoring tested for Toxoplasmos gondii? Oh, no idea. 
Hmm? The dead, dead animals. Dead animals. Next question, where am I? Uh, do you think it would be feasible or desirable to involve stock breeders or shepherds in the monitoring program? Yeah, uh, we, uh, we, we accept the, the interested public. Uh, but we we are aware of that uh, they have to be uh, they have to have knowledge uh, for the, for the sampling. If if we look at the genetic sampling, uh, if they pass the some lectures or workshops we do, then it is possible. Uh, but they, they could, can they can of course uh, help with other uh, data they, they can gather with uh, photos or with uh, uh, data on uh, observations and so on. The third question is, uh, what time of the year, what season does wolf removal occur in Slovenia? Uh, the permits are issued uh, over the whole year, uh, but of course the, the easiest, uh, the, the, the part of the year when it's the easiest, uh, uh, when it, it is the easier to, to call the, the wolf is during the winter time, because you can track the wolves. It, it's, it's also to uh, detect them much easier. But yeah, the, 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 they are done throughout the whole year. Yeah. Okay, and then we have one from the, from here. Bonjour, Eric Ansen, je suis le directeur de l'Office français de la biodiversité pour le, le sud-est de la France. Euh, à vous entendre, euh, les interventions qui sont faites sur les hybrides semblent assez simples, puisque vous autorisez donc cette destruction-là. Ce qui nous étonne, c'est que nous avons constaté, nous, des loups euh, qui phénotypement semblaient être hybrides, et en fait n'en étaient pas vraiment, mais aussi le contraire. Donc des loups qui avaient un phénotype qui était un loup parfait et qui était hybride. Donc euh, voilà, la difficulté que l'on trouve pour pouvoir éliminer les individus hybrides euh, semble compliquée uniquement sur la base de l'observation visuelle. Do you understand anything? I think the problem, a, a problem in France is that it's very difficult to observe uh, the differences uh, uh, between the hybrids and uh, the non-hybrids. Uh, do you have a similar problem? Of course, we, we, we try to get uh, the genetic samples of all of these uh, individuals. But uh, if we see, if we detect the completely black animal, uh, which is occurring in the last few years, uh, we can almost for certain say that it's a hybrid because in the dynamic wolf population, there are no black, pure wolves. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, we'll go back to the chat. Um, so a more general question, have you tried to evaluate what are the main factors are which contribute to the reduced numbers of damages to livestock over the years? There's a second part of the question, which I haven't got in mind. So the, the key thing is, is intensive work with the farmers and the control. This is the key thing which contributes to lower, uh, lower damages. The key things are the control of proper use. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just just to finish, can you hear? Yes, uh, almost. And the, the other thing is what we started to implement is the the higher electric nettings, because the wolf learned how to jump over the one meter high in many cases or overcome. We don't know exactly how. And then when we started the distribution of higher electric nettings and uh, intensive taking care that this is really used properly through this measure, I believe this is the key that we came to the reduction of, uh, of damages. Yes. And the killings as well. So the killings do contribute. Okay. So remember, 
Je ne comprends pas parce qu'on a eu le responsable agricole slovène qui est venu la semaine dernière en France et qui nous a expliqué l'explication de la baisse du nombre d'animaux tués était due par le nombre d'exploitations qui a baissé suite à ces attaques où les éleveurs ils ont arrêté leur exploitation. Et donc, il, il, il exagérait à dire, bah, quand il n'y aura plus d'éleveurs, le taux de réussite de protection sera de 100% parce qu'il n'y aura plus de bêtes à attaquer. L'explication des éleveurs est différente de la vôtre. En fait, la c'est que la Est-ce qu'il vous a donné des chiffres Twenty percent of the farm farm farmers have abandoned their. Uh, right. So, twenty percent of the farmers have abandoned their activity, and it's not because of the protection in front in the world of the region. So uh, we know that with these people who are using now the protections, they still hurt. Most of them still still you do, do that. They just use different types of the protection. If we just look at those who got the prevention measures, so yes, it's true. Uh, in Slovenia, about twenty percent uh, decreased the number of sheep, but the the number of damages decreased for like a half, and the population tripled. So. The, 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 the reduction of sheep cannot be the, the reason for this uh, good uh, reduction. And once again, we are following those who had damages before, got the prevention, and don't have the damage anymore, or have much less damage, to be, to be completely correct. Okay. So are, are the fences that you show to protect the sheep flocks from the wolves, are they also effective against the bears? <laughs> yes. The bears can climb. Okay. Merci. Uh, Zimmerman from Kora, Switzerland. Uh, you mentioned that uh, regarding the regulation of wolves in Slovenia, who is then uh, doing the, the shooting the wolf? Is, are the hunters involved or? Yeah, the, the permission is granted to the uh, local um, manager of the hunting ground. So some of them are the, the managed by the state and some are managed by the hunting clubs. Yeah. Thank you. And regarding the, you mentioned also that you, um, that hunters are also involved in the planning of the deer hunts. Uh, can it happen that uh, the, the hunters can shoot less deer, fewer deers, because wolves are present in a given area? Or I mean, the key thing uh, is uh, are the two things which I mentioned. One is adoption of the uh, structure, which is because we have really prescribed, you know, you can shoot I don't know, this number of red deer uh, older than five years, and this number between five and two years, and this number which uh, with a lower man, uh, with a lower age, and this number of females. So it's really uh, detailed. So uh, this can be then a problem for the hunters because we plan the whole quota. Uh, also, if they have road 
collisions or dead animals, this goes into the quota. So one concrete example, if you have two stacks for the hunters and one is eaten by the wolf, then if you would follow the rules, you wouldn't be allowed to shoot two anymore. And you know, in the hunting ground, having two adult stacks is a big issue, which one, who gets it, when, and so on. So we try to adapt and say, for example, okay, if one is eaten by the wolf, you can still move or remove two as planned. So these are certain certain things which are, are a benefit for the hunters so that they don't have a problem with the management and with the rules and uh, yeah they benefit in, in the other hand they benefit from the from the uh, from having a wolf uh, through this because they have to remove less young animals and less females so and they don't like to shoot so many young animals and females they want to go more for the stags so this is kind of uh, short, but this can be an own presentation for 20 minutes to really explain what it's about. <laughs> Maybe this, uh, for, um, for, for, the, for the managers of the hunting grounds, uh, it's not enough to just detect one wolf, uh, one single wolf. There has to be presence, constant presence of a pack for at least two, uh, two, two consequent uh, seasons. After that, they, they can get the, this benefit, not, not before. I think we have one, one last question. How do you estimate the number of wolves that have been removed or shot? To be removed. How do, you, how do you estimate the number of wolves to be shot or removed? Yes. Hmm. We, we don't uh, calculate the, the number as uh, here in, in France. Uh, we we, patch, uh, we we just um, we, in in the last uh, years we were never close to this uh, 20 29 percent of the population. We were really always much much below. Thank you. On va prendre une toute dernière question parce que ça va faire la transition pour demain matin. Is there a public outrage in Slovenia when wolves are shot? Or is it accepted? Outrage. Yeah. About the... Are people angry about it or do they accept? Yes, yeah, about shooting the wolves. Of course, the, there, are, there are especially some, some NGOs are really um, uh, loud uh, fighting again, against that. Uh, and that's why I, I mentioned before the, the court said that uh, we cannot do it anymore under uh, or through the uh, derogation 16E anymore. And that's why the, we, we, we changed the system and uh, we now approach with really tar target to, and target the, the conflict animals and the hybrids uh, just because of this uh, uh, loud uh, NGOs. Yeah. Thank you very much. We will stop there because that makes a nice transition to for tomorrow morning because at nine o'clock we will start on perceptions and attitudes to the wolves. Laure. Donc on se donne effectivement rendez-vous, on vous donne rendez-vous demain à 9 heures précises pour la suite, les quatre présentations suivantes qui porteront 